welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time it's my 2023 RISC-V update. In case you're not aware, RISC-V is an alternative microprocessor technology that's already used in some embedded devices and which may one day power mobile, desktop and server computers. More specifically, RISC-V is a free and open instruction set architecture, or ISA, that may challenge the closed ISAs used in today's x86 and ARM CPUs. Over the past 12 months, RISC-V adoption and development has accelerated. For example, in September 2022, NASA announced that its next-generation high-performance spaceflight computing processor will have RISC-V cores. A few months later, Google proclaimed that it wants RISC-V to be a Tier 1 architecture for Android, which means that, in a few years' time, we could be using RISC-V phones and tablets. And, a few weeks after Google's announcement, MIT Technology Review named RISC-V as one of the 10 breakthrough technologies of 2023. As these and other developments highlight, RISC-V is on the rise. So, let's continue this update with a quick overview of RISC-V fundamentals. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing and describes any computing architecture that executes a large number of simple instructions to complete a task. However, RISC-V is a specific RISC processor architecture and the fifth generation of RISC developed at the University of California, Berkeley. RISC-V was created to support research and education with its first instruction set manual published in May 2011. To make it possible for RISC-V to be used in industry, in 2015 a non-profit governing body was established called the RISC-V Foundation. Initially, this was based in the United States. However, in 2020, it relocated to Switzerland and became RISC-V International. Today, RISC-V International has over 3,100 members, which is over 1,000 more than it had a year ago. Clearly, I cannot name all members here, but they include Alibaba, Google, Huawei, IBM, Intel, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Samsung, Seagate, and Western Digital. To explain RISC-V, it's important to highlight the difference between a closed and an open ISA. Today, practically all end-user and enterprise computing hardware is based on one of two closed instruction set architectures. The first is x86, or technically x86-64, with most desktops, laptops and servers having an x86 processor from Intel or AMD, who each own part of the intellectual property. Meanwhile, today's other dominant ISA is ARM, with practically all Android and iOS devices and new Apple computers having a processor based on ARM intellectual property. Many different companies design and manufacture ARM processors, but because the ARM ISA is closed, they all have to pay license fees to ARM Limited. In contrast, the RISC-V ISA is free and open. This means that anybody can design and sell a RISC-V processor without any constraints on their actions. Clearly, RISC-V chips themselves can never be free as they are costly to manufacture in a fabrication plant. But the ISA on which any RISC-V processor is based is not owned or controlled by any organisation. Whilst the RISC-V ISA is free and open, it's up to the designers of RISC-V cores and chips to decide whether the intellectual property they have created will be placed in the public domain. And this means that not all RISC-V technology is open hardware, with some RISC-V core and chip designs being open and some being closed. Today, there are three main areas of computer processor application. Firstly, 
Processors are used to run software on end-user devices such as PCs, phones and laptops. Secondly, they power servers and other enterprise computing hardware. And finally, they're used in embedded devices. For example, today, processor cores are embedded in cars and in many electrical and electronic products. Many computer components also have an embedded processor, with, for example, all SSDs and hard drives requiring a processor in their controller. In early 2023, RISC-V is not yet ready for end-user and enterprise computing. However, for a few years, RISC-V cores have been used in some embedded applications. For example, Renesas now sell their RZ5 embedded microprocessor unit, which contains a RISC-V core. And several expressive microcontroller chips, such as their ESP32C3 wireless SoC, are now also based on RISC-V. In July 2022, it was reported that, across all manufacturers, 10 billion RISC-V cores have now been shipped. In December 2022, Qualcomm also announced that they've now shipped chips containing 650 million embedded RISC-V cores. And Western Digital has developed a family of embedded RISC-V cores called Swerve and is already manufacturing RISC-V SSD controllers. As all of these examples demonstrate, RISC-V is already an important and growing embedded processor technology. So, in 2023, we should not be asking if RISC-V is going to be a success, because it already is, but whether that success can extend from embedded to end-user and server computing. Whilst RISC-V processors are not yet at the heart of any commercial servers, some pioneers are intent on making this a future reality. For example, in December 2022, Ventana Microsystems announced its Veyron family of server class RISC-V CPUs. The first of these is the Veyron V1, which is a 3.6 GHz 5 nanometer process product. The V1 is expected to be available in the second half of 2023 and will be physically delivered in the form of 16 core chiplets, up to 8 of which may be integrated to provide a 128 core processor package. Ventana also have a 3 nanometer Veyron 2 in development, which will allow up to 12 16 core chiplets to be integrated to deliver a 192 core package. Another company that has recently announced a RISC-V processor for potential server application is TENS Torrent. Their new RISC-V hardware is called Ascalon and has a chiplet-based architecture that offers 8 cores per cluster. TENS Torrent anticipates that Ascalon application will range from edge devices to cloud servers, with the company having a particular focus on artificial intelligence. Turning to end-user computing, the open-source version of Android has already been demonstrated running on RISC-V hardware. And, given that Google has committed to make RISC-V a Tier 1 Android platform, it's reasonable to expect RISC-V tablets, TVs and set-top boxes running Android in a few years' time. In addition, we already have several RISC-V single-board computers like these that can run Linux. Ubuntu now explicitly provides RISC-V support, with Fedora and Debian being two of the other distros now running on RISC-V development boards. Granted, right now, as I've demonstrated in other videos, the software side of end-user RISC-V is far from optimised, with performance still needing to be improved. Even so, it's reasonable to predict that end-user RISC-V mini PCs and SBCs could be on the market by 2025 or 2026. With Star 5's Vision 5.2 now available from $75, developer access to RISC-V hardware capable of running Linux is also increasing. Later in 2023, we expect the Vision 5.2 to be joined on the market by the Star 64 from Pine 64 
which, like the Vision 5 II, will be based on Star 5's JH710 system on a chip, which has four Sci-5 1.5 GHz U74 cores. Also due soon is the Cypede Lychee Pi 4A. This is going to be based on a module that plugs into a carrier board and, as we can see here on the website, will at some point be able to be clustered. The Pi 4A will be based on a TH1520 system on a chip with four 1.8 GHz T-head C910 RISC-V cores. The C910 is currently the most powerful core available from T-head and, as part of the quad-core TH1520, is due to appear not only in the Pi 4A, but also in the much-anticipated Roma RISC-V laptop. This is indeed now listed for pre-sale on Alibaba, although do note that the price reflects its status as very early development hardware. To be clear, none of the devices I've just mentioned are final end-user products. Rather, they are early RISC-V computers that will allow programmers and others to develop the RISC-V software ecosystem. Talking of which, a final piece of highly anticipated hardware is the Hi5 Pro P550 development system from Intel and Sci5. This will be based on an Intel Horse Creek RISC-V system on a chip, which will have four 2.2 GHz Sci5 P550 processor cores. This micro ATX board will also have 16 GB of RAM, a PCIe slot, and a standard ATX power connector. So, by the end of 2023, developers and enthusiasts are going to have a considerable choice of early RISC-V hardware. In my view, RISC-V is a disruptive technology that in the next few years will make the leap from embedded devices to data center and desktop. However, as I'm sure you're aware, others disagree. And I think this is often because they focus on comparing the RISC-V ISA to the x86 and ARM ISAs, and they conclude that the RISC-V ISA is less sophisticated, it's less mature. That's obviously the case. It's had a lot less time and money invested in it so far. And it's also the case that many people who talk about RISC-V focus a great deal on the specifics of current hardware. So, for example, they'd look at this, the Vision 5.2 SBC, and they'd say it's not as powerful as a comparable x86 and ARM board, particularly because of the, the quality of the software support right now. However, taking a different perspective, I look at the Vision 5.2 and I go, this is an amazing thing for RISC-V because the Vision 5.2 gives us twice the processing power for half the price than the, the Vision 5.1, which came out from Star 5 less than a year earlier. And so I look at Vision 5.2 and I go, this is very significant. This shows us the pace of development of RISC-V. And I think right now, that's the thing we need to focus on, pace of development of RISC-V hardware and software when it comes to data center and desktop, not the specifics of particular boards and how they compare to their current x86 and ARM equivalents. More broadly, thinking about the future of RISC-V, I think there are four other things we have to focus on beyond the pace of development. And the first of these is geopolitical instability. Sadly today, the world is less harmonious than it was a few decades ago. Countries aren't getting on as well as they used to. And I'm not going to get into the politics and the rights and wrongs of all that, but in a world where we are all dependent on microprocessors, it's significant because right now the market is dominated by Intel and AMD who are based in the United States and by ARM who are based still largely in the United Kingdom and going to a list on the US stock market. And therefore it's not surprising that countries around the world are going, we're getting a bit nervous about the supply of microprocessors. It's uh, hardly surprising that China is described as the backbone of RISC-V and is investing very heavily in RISC-V technology. And the same thing is going on, for example, in India, in uh, Russia, in European Union. The EU has just decided to invest 270 million euros in developing RISC-V to try and achieve some level of self-sufficiency. Related, the market could get nervous. 
It's not that long ago that Nvidia was trying to take over ARM, for example. That would have been a big game changer for RISC V. And we at the moment have got a lawsuit between ARM and Qualcomm. That's also making people slightly nervous what's going to happen in the market in the future. And I think in general, we should expect over time companies to wish to be less dependent on other companies for their, their core intellectual property. And that will be good for the development of RISC V. Again, sort of related, I think we should ask if we expect x86 and ARM to dominate forever. It seems to me even people going today that they don't think this 5 will have any impact beyond embedded computing, they're not saying that because they think the current state of affairs in the computing industry is, is perfect and that nothing should change. And if we don't think that x86 and ARM can and should dominate forever, that doesn't mean, of course, that RISC V is going to have an impact in the industry, but it means that something will have to at some point. And it's quite likely that's going to be something based on more open than closed IP if it's going to have a chance of being broadly adopted. So it may be RISC V. And the final thing I would say is that RISC V, whatever you think of it, is a new frontier that will attract emotional investment from the open source community and beyond. And we shouldn't underestimate the significance of this. There are loads of people out there with great technical competence who'd like to be a part of something new, and RISC-V offers that opportunity. And increasingly, as we get more and more hardware like this available, lower cost hardware for RISC-V, which is you know, more and more powerful, as we get more hardware like this, the open source community will increasingly get behind RISC-V. And it's not just the open source community who get excited by new frontiers, people working in large companies are more likely to give a little bit extra if they're working on a new ecosystem as opposed to creating a patch for a particular server. Anyway, that is the end of my RISC-V review for 2023. I'm sure we'll be back in 2024 doing the same thing, seeing what's happening by then. And before then, I'm sure I'll have more RISC-V SBCs to review on the channel. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.